What's going on YouTube? I'm Nick Limon and welcome to the very first episode of Extra Credit. What's Extra Credit? Well, let me answer your question with another question. What's a movie without some popcorn? A burger without fries? Peanut butter without jelly? Extra Credit is a show where I take a look at games you're playing and suggest movies, books, and even other games that help enrich your gaming experience. And also because I think people should watch more movies and read more books. This week's game is Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. The Phantom Pain puts players in the role of the series quote unquote hero, Snake, aka Big Boss, aka Punish Snake, aka Venom Snake, as he attempts to rebuild his army that was taken from him and exact revenge on those who took it. Being the film nut that I am, let's take a look at the obvious choice here Apocalypse Now. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola, of the Godfather fame. This film tells the story of Captain Willard as he's sent on an assassination mission into Cambodia to take out a rogue colonel who has set himself up to be a leader of a local tribe there. First of all, the reason why I recommend this film is theme. Thematically speaking, Apocalypse Now takes a look at the horrors of war. This directly relates back to the Phantom Pain in that we once saw the young and optimistic snake descend into the blurred line between good guy and bad. You go and search for the movie online and then you realize there's two different versions, which one should I watch? Well, let's take a look. There's the original theatrical cut which runs at about two and a half hours long. If it's your first time watching the movie, this is the one I highly recommend you take a look at. Now, if you like it, then I'd recommend going with the Redux. The Redux is another hour long, so three and a half hours of movie and all the extra scenes that are added merely provide context for the scenes that were in the original film. Netflix subscribers rejoice! The second movie on this list is Beasts of No Nation. This Netflix developed feature film tells the story of Agu, a young West African child who is forced to become a child soldier when war breaks out in his country. Beasts of No Nation is a haunting and graphic depiction about the loss of innocence during war. Unlike The Phantom Pain, this movie has something meaningful to say about child soldiers and delivers it in an inspiring way. This film was directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga, who directed season one of True Detective, the good season. So if you like that, you might want to take a look at this film. His artistic style brings about a nice contrast between the lush, beautiful African landscapes and the on-screen horrors that occur. This next movie on the list is The Battle of Algiers. This film tells the real-life story about the French occupation of Algiers. The people of Algiers are no longer happy with their French overlords, so they form their own rebellion to attempt to take back the city. This film directly relates back to the Phantom Pain because, you guessed it, theme. Themes present throughout the entirety of Battle of Algiers include anti-imperialism and the ethics surrounding torture. The anti-imperialism is highly present throughout the entirety because the people of Algiers are outright rejecting the culture that the French are trying to bring to their city. As far as the ethics surrounding torture, this film exposes the idea by saying torture gets results, but at the end of the day, is it right? The final film on this list is Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon. The reason why this movie is on the list is because it deals with the idea that humanity as a whole is not capable of telling the whole truth. And we don't do it to deceive others, but the way we remember it tends to affect our judgment, and in doing so, we truly believe the things that did not happen, happened. Aside from that, we once again deal with the idea of the westernization of culture. Akira Kurosawa was often criticized for his films not being Japanese enough. Critics stated that his love of directors in America and their styles made his movies more American than Japanese. Now, this doesn't directly relate back to The Phantom Pain, but it does so at a meta level. Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima is much like Kurosawa in that his love of American movies, culture, and entertainment has heavily influenced his art. But in doing so, he, didn't, he hasn't given up his Japanese identity. More so, his love of the two has transformed his work into something new altogether. Now that we've got movies on the way, let's move on to books. My first book recommendation is All Quiet on the Western Front. If you went through high school English, you've probably had to read this at some point. But if you haven't, I highly recommend it. It's written by Eric Maria Remark and tells a story about a young German soldier during World War I. Themes in this book deal heavily with the ideas of betrayal and the horrors that occur in the downtime in between battles. Yes, the battles are horrible in themselves, but the downtime in between battles 
is a thing that truly drives a soldier insane. My second book recommendation is Boss Fight Books Metal Gear Solid. It's written by Ashley and Anthony Birch and is kind of a retrospective look at the original Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation. These two authors kind of tear apart the original game and tell readers what they loved about it and what they hated. And while they do tend to be kind of mean with all the things they say about the original, they do offer some interesting insights into the psychology of the game. And while I don't agree with everything they say, it's nonetheless an interesting read. Last but certainly not least, my game recommendations. My first recommendation is Boktai, The Sun is in Your Hand. Aside from the original Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble that was released for the original Game Boy Color, Boktai is Hideo Kojima's idea for a stealth action adventure game on the Game Boy Advance. It's basically Metal Gear Solid, but with the sun. And what I mean by that is that the physical cartridge of the game has a tiny little solar sensor panel on the back of it that reads UV rays. Still confused? You play the role of Django, a solar boy who wields the power of the gun del sol, which, oddly enough, derives its power from physical, real-world sunlight. The sunlight in the real world powers up your weapon in-game to fight off the forces of evil that include zombies, bats, ghosts, vampires, and other cool monsters. The game itself plays a lot like Metal Gear Solid in that you stealth your way through levels in order to reach the bosses. You use familiar mechanics like knocking on walls and shooting enemies in the back, which is pretty cool. If you like Metal Gear Solid, you'll no doubt like Boktai, but you do need a Game Boy Advance to play it. Or you can cheat the system and emulate it on PC where you don't even need real sunlight. My final game on the list is actually two. We've got Metal Gear Solid Acid and the sequel Metal Gear Solid Acid 2. These games are very different from the other games in the Metal Gear Solid series in that they're card strategy battling games. You build a deck and using the cards in those decks, you sneak around the level and use equipment and special abilities on unsuspecting enemies. Yeah, it's totally different from other Metal Gear Solid games, but if you love the universe, this is a great way to stay entrenched in that world. Keep in mind, nothing that happens in these two games is considered canon. Alright everyone, pencils down, pencils down. That about wraps up this episode of Extra Credit. Like what you saw? Please, let me know. Got any suggestions for me or did I forget a game you love? Tell me in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter, at AdventNick, and as far as a hint for the next episode, war. War never changes. And with that, I'll see you later, Diamond Dogs, and remember, never be game over.